How, how was your store use, uh, Tom? Like, when did you start? Like, uh, and, and how did that go? Just to give us an idea. Every time I talk about this, the young 20-year-olds go like, oh, he's lying. In between contests, I would try something that was more stronger, like Poland, which is like the old time. Yeah, old I remember that, that yeah. I guess. Not just by prism. I learned about steroids from swimmers when I was in college, okay? Uh, steroids are, are around and they they're happen to be used in bodybuilding. And rather than to hide the fact that I have used them, do use them throughout the course of the year, uh, I'd rather be honest with you and I'll tell you some of the problems, uh, some of the proper procedures, because uh, I'd like to uh, discourage abuse, okay? I think abuse is why, why should that be present at all? The most I've ever taken, the most I would ever consider take would be 100 milligrams a day. Okay. Uh, 100 milligrams is based upon my body weight and the type of steroid, uh, uh, steroids I take. I believe in anabolic therapy and not androgenic therapy. Many of us, we love our favorite bodybuilders in the world, the physiques we all look up to all our lives. is is the 70s era, the golden era of bodybuilders, right? But a lot of times, we get pissed at them because anytime they come out and they say what they took back then, we say they're a liar, they're a piece of shit, they're hiding their secrets, their magic potions, whatever it took to get them there. They don't want to tell us, they don't want to share, right? So we look at them like they're liars. Well, Tom Platts is one of those guys because... In the early 80s, he did an interview saying he took 100 milligrams a day, which is 700 milligrams a week of combined things. He didn't say exactly what he took. And then a few years ago, he comes out again when he's asked the question and he says, no, what I took was 20 milligrams a day of Winstrol and 100 milligrams of Deca. And I'm thinking... What is that really going to do but fuck up your dick? It's not going to do anything. And he contradicted the things he said in the past. So all of us who are watching and we know the history, we looked at him like he's a liar contradicting himself. Winstrol, 20 milligrams a day. Okay, so Winstrol, 20 milligrams a day. So we're talking about 140 a week in total. Okay. And a shot of DECA, 100 milligrams a week. That was my 10-year solution to drug intervention. <laughs> yeah, 100 milligrams a week of DECA. Plus, Winstrol at 20 milligrams a day. Does anyone believe that? No. Well, some people might, for sure. But the fact that there's such a large discrepancy between what he said before, it's hard to believe, realistically. So, again, he talked about at his peak, he would be at 700 a week. So is it standard that he did, you know, 225 or whatever a week? And he just experimented with that once and then never needed to go do it again. Well, there's a new interview out on Dorian Yates' channel. He's got a channel. He has a podcast. It seems like he's uploading again. I suggest everyone go check it out. And he asks Tom, what is it that he took back then? And Tom, it seems like when he did that interview a couple years ago, he was withholding information, which he reveals now, because now he says... It was only during pre-contest did he do that DECA Winstrol bullshit. But during the off-season, when he was getting bigger, he was trying Trembolone and a bunch of other shit, but he cut them out during the pre-contest because he was getting too big. How, how was your steroid use, uh, Tom? Like, when did you start? Like, uh, and how did that go? Just to give us an idea... I mean, uh, I mean, I was involved in bodybuilding in the 80s in the UK, so I kind of know what people were doing more or less then. But what what were you doing and what was the general you know, thing that guys were doing at Gold's Gym who you're all prepping for contests and everything and you're all talking and sharing information? I mean, what, what was really kind of a standard approach? Every time I talk about this, the young 20-year-olds go like, Oh, he's lying. Yeah. He's just so old, he forgot. 
I have documentation. I have journals like you did. Yeah. Why. <laughs> we go, we tells you everything I took and everything. I could show you the journals and say, okay, here's what I did. Now, in between contests, I would try something that was more stronger, like terrible, and which is like the old time. Yeah, old I remember trend, that. Yeah. I guess. I, I didn't like. It. I was like, oh my! I didn't respond well to high androgens. I'm like, oh, I'll be like nervous, wreck, sweating, and I go, I can't wait till it wears off. That's me. Okay, so it's like a mental uh, thing from the androgens. You get too too hyper. Some people do with the trembolone. So when I remember when I talk about, they they saw me doing videos at different like one in New Zealand where I talked about that and you yeah. know the higher dosages and experimenting with that. That that was true at that time. Every Olympia, I I laid in the sun three hours a day. Okay, salt water, the tan, and it yeah. was 20 milligrams of Winstraw and a shot of Deca, maybe maybe 200 milligrams a week of Deca. That was it. That was my approach to the Olympia, and it was very unsophisticated. Okay, but it was like the salt water, the beach work for me. I got big during the off season, and I just got really quality, like saran wrap skin. But my my steroid usage was, you know, very very low. Probably a little bit lower than the bikini girls. Yeah, what they do now? Yeah, the bikini girls will be doing that. Twenty milligrams of Winstrol or, or Anavar or something, you know. So I know people when they hear what he's saying now, they're still gonna say he's lying, right? But I got a few things to say about that because you guys and I've spoke about this before, back in the day, seventies. 80s, even 90s. The dosages that people took were a lot less, not even a fraction of what people take now. And if you notice in history, okay, in 70s, the dosages were low. In the 80s, they got higher. In the 90s, they got even higher. And then now, look what they're fucking taking. Back then, people were scared to mess with this shit and take massive dosages, so they didn't take it. But what that did, it separated the piece of shit bodybuilders, to the great ones, because they had the genetics to do it on those little dosages. I know everybody that watches this is going to say, oh, Plath is lying. He's not telling the truth. He doesn't want to tell us the reality of how many grams he took a day. He's, you know, I already forgot he's so old right now. And all I can say to our listeners and our viewership is, hey, I got nothing to lose or nothing to gain. Oh. I really knew the truth in the way it was. And if, if you really, if I really wanted to prove it, I can pull out my journals, journals of over the last 20 years and say, okay, here's what I did before the Olympian 81. Here's what I did before the Olympian 82. And not that I want to, I don't, I don't like talking about it a lot of times with you. I, I will. And I sort of vowed to myself. Say, That's well, it's, it's part of the game. And if we don't talk about it, there's an elephant in the room. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather talk about it and uh, don't hide anything. Just this is the way it is. This is what I do, and uh, you know everyone makes their decisions anyway. So I, you know, in the off like, season uh, when I was trying a little bit higher dosages or eating more, yeah, uh, I got so big I looked like a modern day bodybuilder. Like I got I got two I can't weigh two forty five. I was two forty five. Yeah, exposing at two twenty five, and I'm like. I'm just too big. I went to, I remember going to Paris, to France, and guest posing at 240. You know, all the guys nowadays, like, yeah! yeah, yeah. Them, I won't stand next to Zane. I'm going to look stupid, you know what I mean? And so I had to push my body weight down those years. So you didn't need high doses. Maybe if you were a slimmer guy that didn't put on so much muscle and the standard was more muscle, then yeah. maybe you'd consider it if it was necessary, right? That didn't happen to uh -huh. you, okay? Uh -huh. You brought that to light that, wow, enormous. And I loved it. I loved it. You're all the, the way I thought all those years, especially in the art, was like, that's what I can do. But I got to sort of orchestrate it and design it so it, I can look aesthetic. And if you look at history again, okay, think about this. Dorian Yates, Kevin Lavrone, Lee Priest, they all came out, others too, and said their dosages, right? And these are all people that we never believed were telling us the truth. And we've all been calling them a liar. But it always goes back to what I was saying. 
Genetics is the biggest key. And those people, they were just born different. They weren't requiring what people take now to not even look half good as what they did. I've been on TRT for over 10 years and it's done so much for my life to make me feel younger, stronger than I recently signed with a company called Live Forever Health. I'm going to put a link in my coupon code in the bio. And this company, you know, everything's been so seamless, you know, and I tested this out. You know, I would never recommend things to people unless I'm using it, unless I tested the whole process. And the process couldn't be easier. They sent me a kit to send my blood back in the mail. Uh, they got my results. We went, I met with the doctor, with the nurse practitioner. We went over my results. And then they gave me my prescription, sent me the testosterone in the mail. So it couldn't be easier. And again, this is a company I trust that I actually did the whole process with. And pricing is competitive, similar to everybody else who does it. But this is a company that I use and a company, again, that I trust. 